Bucky. So, I'm sitting the other day at home, chomping on my gluten-free sandwich, a man happy with the world and all around me. And the BBC News was on the background. I wasn't really listening to it. But then a report came on that perked my interest. This one. Newly released documents from the FBI revealed that Queen Elizabeth II faced a potential assassination threat during a visit to the United States back in 1983. <gasps> I wonder who could try and assassinate the Queen? Could it be disgruntled Canadians? Could it be annoyed Australians? No. It was. The second was the subject of a potential assassination threat here in the United States by the IRA during a 10 day visit to the state of California back in 1983. Now, according. Now, what got me was when they reported where the, the uh, threat had come from, because the threat was made to an American cop by somebody in an Irish bar in San Francisco, in California. Now, the epicenter of bullshit exists in Irish bars across America, but the epi, epi, epicenter of Irish-American bullshit is in California. And in San Francisco, let me tell you, Irish bars, uh, if you look at Disney World, you could look at Disney World as a documentary compared to what goes on in Irish bars in California. More bullshit and lies and nonsense is told in Irish bars than even in the House of Commons. Proof of that was when the plan was unraveled. We didn't hear what their plan was. The first attack was to happen. Now, the caller apparently said that he was intending to harm the Queen either by dropping an object from San Francisco's Golden Gate Bridge onto the Royal Yacht Britannia as the yacht was passing underneath the bridge. I've been on the Golden Gate Bridge. I've been there. Do you understand? It's one of the highest bridges in the world. Paddy and Mick were going to drop an object onto the yacht, right, from the Golden Gate Bridge. I'd love to have seen that. I'd love to... It's a coming, Michael. It's a coming. It's coming. Go. Ah, <laughs> oh, you missed. Go. Go right. Go right. Go right. <laughs> Go. Ah, <laughs> oh, you missed. Go left. <laughs> Are you serious? Could it get any more ridiculous? It did. Because Paddy and Mick had a fallback plan. If the first attack didn't go well, the guys had a fallback plan because these guys were clued in. Or by mounting some other unspecified threat intending to kill the Queen during a visit to the Yosemite National Park. Now, no, for years again who haven't been there, the trees in those forests are as big as houses. Now, considering these two idiots were going to throw a rock off the Golden Gate Bridge to hit the Queen, no doubt they intended sawing down one of them trees to fall on the royal party as they went by. <laughs> they would have been there for six months. Come on, come on, she's coming. <laughs> Queen Elizabeth was safe. You understand? She was never in any danger. My worry is the FBI, that the FBI would listen to such bullshit. Now, they kept doing it because after 9-11, which they missed, they missed the fact that Arabs were doing flight training and telling the people training them that they only wanted to learn to take off. They weren't interested in landing. I would have thought that would have sent little bells going off somewhere in the FBI. Nada. But worse, years later, they listened to another lie by this guy. Now, if you think for a second I'm going to try to pronounce his name, you're very much mistaken. I am sorry. But this guy said to the FBI that Saddam had weapons of mass destruction in Iraq. They believed him. They started a war. And there were no weapons of mass destruction. So my suggestion is, take the eye out of FBI, because these silly bastards couldn't investigate their own naval. You understand? <laughs> no offence, I wish they'd be coming after me, but... Rattle, folks!